Good morning, I'm Kate. I'm the co-founder of Grow Up Urban Farms. And thank you so much to all of you who sent us questions for Supermarket Siesta Week with Farm Drop. Our first question came from Scott on Facebook. And Scott wants to know, where's the best place to acquire startup grants? Because there's lots of empty commercial units near where he lives in Kent, and he'd really like to start up his own project. Well, Scott, the honest answer is, finding the right funding for your project or your business is a pretty big job and you want to look at if there's any regional or local funding available. You're going to have to spend a lot of time on Google searching different grants that are available. You can look at Innovate UK, they're the government's innovation fund. Um, there's often EU funding available as well that you can have a look at. Uh, but really it's just a matter of finding what's right for you because also depending on what kind of organisation you are, whether you're a not-for-profit PIC or a charity or a limited company, there are going to be different organisations who will be willing to fund you. Our second question is from Ben, also on Facebook. And Ben wants to know, how viable is it to generate a large proportion of the salad and herbs that a city or a town needs um, in a warehouse and how big would that warehouse need to be if it needed to feed 100,000 people? Well then, again, a big combination of factors are going to affect the decision of that, how big that warehouse needs to be, depending on what you're growing, what the local demand is. But to give you an idea, this farm that we're on now, Unit 84, it's 600 square metres, the whole footprint of the building. And we estimate that in this building, we can produce enough salad year round to feed around 3,000 people their weekly salad that they want to have with their meat. Right, third question from Daniel, also on Facebook. Uh, Daniel has a practical question, specifically about pipes and attachments. Can we recommend a good stockist for people who are thinking of setting up their own aquaponics or hydroponics system? Well, um, we work with a company called Hydro Garden. They're one of the UK's largest hydroponic equipment suppliers. And I definitely recommend that you check out their website. They also then stock lots of local shops, um, but if you need any uh, detailed information, their website's also really good about helping you with parts and stuff. The other thing you can check out for sort of more information as opposed to buying parts is to go and have a look on the Bright Agrotech website. Um, they're a company in America, they make the zip grow towers that we use in the grow up box and they've got loads of really good information on setting up your own system. Right, I'm going to switch social media channels now. A question from Twitter from Sherry, who wants to know what's an ideal space for urban farming and what do we need to get more farms and grow up boxes across London? Well, Sherry, um, when it comes to big commercial farms like the one we're on now, spaces that we think are ideal are warehouse spaces that can be usefully and fairly easily converted to be used for growing. In terms of smaller growing systems like the grow up box, you need a space that has access to electricity and to water but the most important thing with running a smaller system like that is having the people available who are going to help you run that system okay back to facebook for another question um, mark wants to know whether we would ever look at running any learning sessions or, or training sessions in london um, this is definitely something that we'd look at doing we've previously taken part in other training courses down in Bristol, run by the Bristol Fish Project, another aquaponics organisation. And if we thought there was enough demand in London for us to set up our own training programme here, say over the course of a couple of weeks, where you'd come along for a couple of hours once a week, learn about aquaponics, learn about setting up your own system, learn about setting up your own aquaponics business, then that's definitely something we'd look at doing. So if that is something you're interested in, please send us a tweet, send us an email, and we'll start looking at how we could do that next year. Right, another question, this one from Instagram, from the Herb Lab, uh, and they want to know, is there any insight on how the nutritional makeup of the salads and herbs that we grow compares to soil grown salads and herbs? It's a really good question. We get asked quite often about the nutritional makeup of our products and how that compares. Now the reality is, it's really difficult to get any information on how soil grown fresh food so vegetables, salads, what the nutritional makeup is of that, because it's going to be different everywhere that it's grown, because the soil's going to be different, the water's going to be different, the fertilizer's going to be different. So actually it's really hard to get a picture of the average nutritional makeup of um, a pea shoot, for example. Now the really interesting thing about our farming environment is that our conditions are consistent all year round. We know exactly what's going in, 
so that should mean that we should know exactly what's coming out. We haven't actually done any nutritional profiling yet of our product, but we are in conversation with a couple of universities at the moment to try and set up a project to really understand what nutritional benefits there might be from our produce, and also if there are any gaps in nutrition, how we can look at um, amending our fertilizer, which comes from the fish, uh, so basically looking at what we feed the fish to see how that could impact the ultimate nutritional makeup of the salads. Okay, last question, and this one was on Twitter, uh, and it's from our friends at Rosa's Thai Cafe. So Rosa's are one of our best customers, as well as Farm Club, of course. Um, if you go and eat at Rosa's, you'll almost certainly be eating our Thai basil or holy basil. They use it in loads of their dishes, and the food there is fantastic. And the guys at Rosa's want to know what drew us to urban farming. Well, I guess that's quite a long story. We set this business up three and a half years ago, and really what drove me to be so interested in urban farming was that I thought there had to be a real interesting possibility to see how we could grow food in cities in a way that was sustainable, created jobs and had a positive social and environmental impact. And it was the same for my business partner and to be honest it's the same for everyone who works for us. We're really driven by the idea that actually growing food in an environment like this close to the city can be one way of how we make our entire agricultural system more sustainable. So, thank you very much for all your questions. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you can go onto Farm Drop anytime you like and check out all of our delicious products available as well as lots of amazing other food from amazing local producers. Bye!